Hello, my name is Ian McCall and this is a video from the Demoscopy Made Simple series on vessels. Now, vessels, look at vessels last in deciding on the nature of a, a lesion. They're the least reliable feature to uh, use when you're looking at uh, a, a dermatoscopic view. And what you should do is identify the predominant vessel type and check the table below. Now, there are a few vessel types that are of some uh, importance. Uh, serpentine and lineal branching vessels of BCC are fairly reliable, as is the polymorphous pattern with dot vessels that you see in an amelanotic melanoma, and also the coiled or sheet-like coiled vessels found in SCC in sites you are also a good marker. So, Serpentine and linear branching of BCC, polymorphous with dots for an amelanotic melanoma, and coiled vessels in SCC in situ are all pretty reliable. You know, if you look at tumours and how they, they grow, the vessels that we see through the dermatoscope depend on the thickness of the skin that we're examining and the thickness of the tumour. Now, skin tumours get their blood supply from the dermal plexus, and the vessels come off as loops. Now, if a tumour's thin, then seen from above, these little loops look like dots. Whereas if the tumour's thicker, the loops are a lot longer and they're spreading over the lesion. And when you look at them obliquely, they look uh, looped vessels or what they used to call hairpin vessels. Now, these looped vessels are best seen at the edge of the lesion. Um, and with keratinocytic tumours, these looped vessels also have a clear halo around them of keratin. It's due to the ensheathing keratinocytes. And that feature isn't present uh, in melanocytic lesions, so it's a good differential. Now, as a tumour grows and thickens, these vessels become more variable with twisting and turning. Sometimes you'll get some uh, coiled vessels. And they also tend then to course over the surface of the tumour. And so you'll see features of uh, linear branching that's similar to basal cell skin cancer, but it's just related to the thickness of the tumour and the way in which the blood vessels grow to supply it uh, with blood. These two images here are courtesy of Harold Kittler, uh, Cliff Rosendahl and Alan Cameron. They've described vessels as dots, straight vessels as straight lines, vessels as curved lines, vessels as helical lines, um, vessels as clods, looped vessels, these were the hairpin things I was talking about, serpentine vessels and coiled vessels that you see in uh, SCC inside you. And these vessels can be arranged in certain patterns. And the ones that are probably most important to us are the branched pattern in BCC, but also in any rapidly uh, growing tumour. The serpiginous dot pattern that you see in clear cell acanthoma, and this radial pattern that you'll see in uh, some adnexal tumours and sebaceous hyperplasia. This uh, table here attempts to put together the vessels with the common pattern that they have. Now, dot vessels, you'll often, uh, it's quite, they're quite good for uh, melanoma and nevus, but they're also a feature of psoriasis, stasis in the lower legs, clear cell acanthoma, and sometimes bones where the coils look like dots. Clods, you'll see those in hemangiomas and pigmented purpuric dermatosis. Vessels that's lined straight, you'll see in scars. It's quite a, uh, a good one to uh, know as well. Looped ones we've talked about with keratinizing tumors and rapid growth. Curved ones, these, in a dermal nevus, and a congenital nevus, and unus will show an example of that. The branched ones, well, they're serpentine, but branched is the pattern. BCC in some agnexo, but also in rapidly growing Merkel's and metastasis. Serpentine, again, BCC in agnexo, coiled in Bowen's and the clear cell acanthoma, helical, we've said melanoma metastasis, and polymorphous, um, various types with dots, a feature of melanoma. Polymorphous without the dots can be any of these, Seb K, uh, sorry, BCC irritated Seb K, Bowen's, LPLK, and a melanoma. Let's have a look at some examples. This, uh, these I should say, are the coiled vessels of an SCC inside you. The big that. Let's make it a little touch smaller. There we go. There's the clinical there. And these are the coiled vessels of an SCC inside you or Bowen's disease. 
then you can have these dot vessels, lots of dots. Remember I said dots could be a feature of uh, melanoma or nevus. You've got sort of brown structureless uh, area here, some brown clods in here. And this was a hypomelanotic melanoma. So the dot vessels uh, helped you in making your diagnosis here. Dot vessels, though, we said could be inflammatory skin disease. And these are the dot vessels of psoriasis. Look at the psoriasis here. This is the picture of vessels that you'll see. Remember, in psoriasis, you can, if you know your histology, you've got a thickened epidermis and you've got uh, large uh, dermal papillae. And as the vessels come up through those, then seen from above, they're seen as dots. As I say, where there's loop vessels seen end on high up in the dermal papillae, that's why they look like dots. And then we've talked about polymorphous vessels. <clears throat> I said polymorphous and dots were very uh, useful for um, a near melanotic melanoma. There weren't many dots in this, I'd have to say. Often you see a lot more dot vessels, but you've certainly got um, polymorphous vessels here. You've got some curved ones, some linear irregular, uh, <coughs> some coiled. So we call this polymorphous, and with dot vessels, it's a hypomelanotic melanoma. This is one here. Let's try and make that a little bit bigger. But this is a corkscrew, a helical um, vessel. There we go. That shows it a little bit uh, better there. And here you've got a pink nodule with a brown halo. And this is a Harold Kittler case. And this was an amelanotic melanoma in a congenital nevus. Here you've got your surrounding lines reticula in this pink amorphous area with this helical vessel. So the vessels can help you in some difficult cases. We were talking before of curved vessels, curved vessels being a feature of uh, dermal nevi or of uh, some congenital nevi and unus nevi. Well, this is a dermal nevus. You know, you might look at that clinically and think it's a BCC, but once you stick your dermatoscope on it, you see these curved vessels, then that's a dermal nevus, whereas you'd get the serpentine with linear branching in a BCC. We talked about an unus nevus there. This is the picture of an unus nevus. Make that a little bit smaller again. Perhaps one more. So... Here you have these curved vessels that you see in this papillomatous unus nevus. Here you've got these orange clods, you know, with keratin and fissures um, between the papillomatous surface of this. So vessels as lines curved in an unus nevus. Uh, what do we have here? Okay, this is the clinical down here. Um, Difficult to say, you might have thought that was melanocytic, perhaps an amelanotic melanoma. Well, a hypomelanotic melanoma. But you've got vessels here, a serpentine with a branching pattern. And this is a feature that you'll see in a pigmented basal cell skin cancer. Here, though, are perhaps the more typical uh, vessels you're going to see in your basal cell skin cancer. The serpentine vessels with a linear branching pattern. Here you've got some brown dots, you've got some blue clods. I think these are probably a little bit of hemorrhage here. This is the clinical up here. I think this is a little bit of uh, hemorrhage in the break in the surface. Um, but remember, these serpentine vessels can also be seen in nexal tumors. And the pattern of vessels as line branched can be seen in any thick, rapidly growing tumor, such as a Merkel's or a metastasis. So you've got to watch that. Um, lines branched. Uh, vessels as lines branched isn't always a basal cell skin cancer, but when you've got some of these additional features, um, then this allows you to make your diagnosis of BCC. So vessels are a help, but they're not the, they're usually the last thing you in fact look for. You know, we were talking there about vessels in a, a branched pattern with any rapidly growing tumor. Well, you've got this lesion here. This was a rapidly growing SCC, and when you had a look at it under the dermatoscope, there were a lot of serpentine vessels in a pattern of line branch. So again, it's just any rapidly growing tumor will in fact show this. So that was an SCC, not a 
not a BCC. Now most SCCs, they are going to show vessels as lines looped just at the edge with that white keratin core surrounding them. Um, this is what you'd see in a, in a rapidly growing um, SCC. Let's have a little look at the clinical. Here was the clinical. You can almost see the vessels just at the edges here in this rapidly growing region. Um, you know, well differentiated SEC, keratoacanthoma, same thing. You still see these looped vessels at the edges there surrounded by keratin. And what else have we got? Okay. We wanted, we talked before about vessels as dots and vessels as clods. Well, you've got a mixture here of some vessels as dots here, but you've got vessels as clods. Um, and this is partly stasis, but it's uh, what we call a pigmented purpuric dermatosis. When the redness fades here a bit, the iron from the extravasated red blood cells gives a browny color, sometimes an orangey color to the skin. And we call that a pigmented purpuric dermatosis. But if you stick a dermatoscope on that, you'll see vessels as dots and vessels as clods. And lastly, you have to come back. You've seen this before when we uh, talked about this lesion. This is a clear cell acanthoma. And here you've got vessels as dots, but dots arranged in a serpiginous lines. Um, and that's the picture that you'll see in a clear cell acanthoma. So a good one to remember, dots arranged in a pattern serpiginous is a clear cell acanthoma. So vessels, there's a lot in vessels. They're not terribly specific. Um, I think it's useful just to go back to the very beginning and just have a look again at that very first slide and remember how to describe the vessels and remember the uh, various uh, diagnoses that can be associated with them. And if you do that, I think you'll find vessels of some value to you when you're looking at uh, both pigmented and non-pigmented lesions with the dermatoscope. Thank you very much.